Welcome to our third Agile seminar on attendance. Today, I'm joined by head teacher Ellen Walton and deputy head teacher Nikki Euler from Sandback High School. Over the past year, they've managed to increase their overall attendance to above 96% this past term. Their pupil premium attendance is up by seven percentage points, and their EHCP attendance is up by almost nine percentage points. So we wanna know how they've done this. And all of this has been achieved through a methodical review of their structures, systems, and processes, but more importantly, at the heart of it all, by creating a culture of belonging and kindness at their school. Ellen and Nikki, thank you for so, so much for joining us. I'm gonna hand over to you. Oh, okay, thank you so much. Um, good morning, everyone. We are here today to share with you our work that we've done to improve attendance at our school. We're not claiming um, to have the silver bullet, but what we can share with you is what, is what we've done to strategically change the culture around attendance, which in turn has significantly improved our attendance figures across the board. Um, this is our school, and you can see a photograph on your screen. This is Sandbach High School and Sixth Form College. I've solely included this photograph in the presentation because I'm really proud of our new windows. Um, this is our motto at the bottom of the screen, an ambitious school with kindness at the heart of our high expectations. And actually, it underpins all that we do here, but including our attendance, because the point is, is that being kind and having high expectations are not mutually exclusive. And we want to talk to you today about what this this means. So this is us. My name is Ellen Walton. I'm head teacher here. And um, this is Nikki Euler, who is our deputy head teacher in charge of pastoral care and um, safeguarding and indeed attendance. And she's going to do the majority of the talking today because she's led on this so brilliantly. So who are we? And you'll want to know a bit about our school, won't you, so that you've got the context. So we are a year seven to 13, fully comprehensive secondary school in Cheshire East, which is just on the edge of Northwest. We're a single sex girls school, um, year seven to 11, and we have a mixed sixth form. Um, you will know that attendance around girls is particularly challenging, and we'll explore that a little bit um, later on. We have quite significant numbers of EAL students, really high numbers actually, and growing. Um, this is in the main due to refugee and asylum seeker children joining our school and joining our community. We have a really wide catchment area. It's really diverse, it's really comprehensive. It includes areas of increased disadvantage, such as crew. A significant proportion of our students come to school either on public transport or school buses. And colleagues will know that in terms of attendance, that brings its own challenges. In terms of our attendance achievement then, so, at the end of the academic year of 21 to 22, our attendance was 92.3. Um, and our attendance at the end of last academic year was 95.13. So we managed to get over that 95% uh, magic marker. So in 12 months, we improved it um, by 2.83%. And we were really pleased with that. But we were particularly pleased um, in terms of our vulnerable groups. So our PP increase, as you can see there, went up by 7%, so it went up to 93.79 from 86.73. EHCP went from 70.94 to 79%, um, and you can see free school meal and SEN support. We still want to build on that, of course we do, but we were really pleased um, on those increases last year. In terms of this academic year and where we are so far, we're really driving and hoping to build on it again. So as you can see, we're tracking at the moment at around 96%. Um, this time last year, at this time in the academic year, we were 95.85. In the year before, we were just under 91. So we're hoping, and so far the figures tell us that we're going to beat, and the hope is that we're going to beat last year's figure. That's what we're striving for. OK, so let's tell you a little bit then about the barriers and concerns that we had when we started to really take this issue head on. So I actually started here as head teacher. My first academic year here was 2020 to 2021. So that was a really difficult year because we obviously had bubbles. We had the second lockdown. We had all of the rules over isolation, contact tracing. We were really hit hard by COVID as many of you were. So really it was hard to get a handle on what our true attendance actually was. 
by January 2022, I was really worried about our attendance figures. I could see where they were going. I was really concerned. Um, on the screen was some of my sort of conclusions that I was able to draw by the January. That attendance wasn't very good. That our processes, our in-school processes were unclear, um, actually unhelpful. Um, and we weren't following them anyway. Um, school staff weren't acting in a timely manner and no one was strategically guiding attendance. There was a real lack of overview. Um, nobody really owned it. And pastoral staff were sourcing their own attendance data. And this made the whole process even more long-winded and cumbersome and just not effective. So what did I do? So the first thing that I did was I asked the local authority to come and do a deep dive, looking at every student in every year group. And we commissioned that, we funded that. And I asked them to be brutally honest. I wanted to know what our issues were. And in a nutshell, it was really clear that what we were doing just wasn't good enough. Um, processes were long, really long. Staff weren't adequately trained. But most importantly, as I've already said, no one really owned it. So from September 2022, I changed um, my SLT structure and I changed who had ownership of attendance and actually what that looked like. I'm going to hand over now to Nikki um, because she was the person who picked that up as the deputy head teacher and, and she picked up that lead. So I'm going to hand over to Nikki. OK, thank you. So as the newly appointed SLT strategic, strategic lead, I identified the following concerns which needed addressing to improve our approach to attendance. So attendance wasn't a priority for our school and for our staff. So that was something that needed to be worked on. There was definitely a lack of cohesion between staff members within school. So um, the uh, admin person in charge of attendance, the pastoral team members, the form tutors, um, also, our communication, um, it, it, to be honest, it was quite brutal um, and it was causing confrontation with parents, with families, with students. So that was something that lacked compassion and kindness and needed addressing. Also, the whole staff were unaware of the importance of attendance and they weren't taking responsibility for it. It was always someone else's responsibility. So, again, that was something we worked really hard to address. So... I created a vision around an att uh, attendance and um, I looked at things like culture, creating clarity, having a consistent approach, um, improving our communication, um, not only among staff and team members, but also with parents and students and ensuring that all of this um, was in the bubble of kindness. So we were ensuring kindness was, was at the heart of everything we did. So from that vision, um, there were three main actions. The first thing was to establish a structure. So I was newly in charge of it. And then it was looking at who did what within our team. So who took responsibility for what? Once that structure was in place, um, so we had an admin um, team member who had responsibility for attendance um, and how they communicated that information to our pastoral leads and pastoral assistants. Once that was in place, we looked at the processes that we had. Um, we reviewed them. We created processes that we felt were, like we said, clear um, and consistently applied and we embedded them in what we did and we'll look at that more in a minute and the third aspect of ensuring my vision was creating a culture for our school around attendance So looking at the processes, um, we signed up to the Cheshire East provision. Now, whilst this isn't necessarily the solution um, to improving attendance, it did help us create our processes. So we slightly adapted them from the Cheshire East model and made our own amendments. They fitted with us and our school and our setting. So currently we do a weekly deep dive. So that's any absence um, below normally 97%. Um, we, we look at below 90 at the moment because we're, we're early doors on the start of term. So every child um, with attendance below that figure is looked at plus chosen code reports. So we're looking at I reports, O reports, C reports and so on. So that weekly deep dive happens every Tuesday by the member of um, admin staff in charge of attendance. 
from there, um, I meet with um, that member of staff on a Wednesday and we go through all of those students and look at all the um, backstory of their absences, why they've been ill, what they've been ill for, um, the patterns. And we look at then applying the next steps, whatever that may, may be, depending on the um, level of their attendance. So we obviously send out a letter one, which is um, a letter that we send to all students as our first contact when we have a concern around attendance. And again, um, we change that wording significantly. So it's a kind letter. It looks at support. It looks at how we can reach out to parents, make contact, tell them we're worried, but also what we can do to help and any, any lines of communications have been opened. If after that letter, there are still um, a drop in attendance, then a letter two is sent out. Now, this, this is a game changer for us. This is where um, we begin that, that really positive steps of communication with parents. So we invite the parent to make a meeting with um, their pastoral lead within school. Um, and that is a supportive meeting where the pastoral lead looks at trying to, in you know, identify what the concerns are around attendance. Is it that they've got a medical need that we need to address? Is it that they're a bit wobbly because they may have, um, you know, have had an issue outside of school or had an issue with a friend or um, has anxiety, whatever it is, but we're trying to identify that and then put steps in place to um, solve it and move it forward. But that meeting is all about creating a, a positive relationship with the parent or carer um, so that we can move forward and address it together as, as a triangle between home, school and the student. Obviously, from there, if there, there are still um, a falling attendance, then we look at things like applying for medical needs um, tuition, if, if that's appropriate. We might unauthorise it. We might follow prosecution pathway, whatever it is. But that weekly meeting that takes place happens without fail. And all of that data is rig rigorously monitored week on week. And we never fail to do that. And it's really important that we're consistent in doing it. Um, if obviously we um, have improvements, then that's celebrated with the student and parent as well. So there's always the positives where we can. So the next step was about creating a culture. And I think this has had the biggest impact in our attendance. So it was about making attendance everyone's business. So we talked with the staff about the importance of listening, empathizing and supporting, but not tolerating a lack of attendance to school. So one of our first actions was to train the whole of our teaching staff. We needed to talk to them about the importance of attendance. If they're not in school, they can't learn. So the first step is getting them through the door and ensuring they're happy to attend all of their lessons. Um, it's now teacher's responsibility to discuss subjects at absences and challenge those subject trends. Whereas previously, um, the culture was the fact you know attendance didn't really belong to the subject teachers attendance was the pastoral team's job or the attendance um, officer's job but now all teachers if a if a child has been missing from their their lesson they have a conversation they talk about you know what's been missed they talk about you know we're worried you've missed this top topic but it's raised by each teacher with that child in a positive way we train form tutors um, to talk compassionately on the return um, of the student to school. So they've talked about, um, you know, the fact we've missed you, um, you know, are you OK? What can we do? And I'll talk about a bit more about that in, in later in the presentation. So subject teachers now have that culture of owning students' absences from their lesson. We don't expect them to, um, you know, copy up notes and things like that. For them. that that's unrealistic. But what we do expect is to have conversations with the students, uh, you know, checking that they have, um, you know, copied up work and, and filled their knowledge gaps. And if it's a substantial one, then doing something about it. We also invited the local authority in as well to deliver attendance overview and training to all staff so that the staff knew, um, you know, the national picture, the local picture uh, and, and how Cheshire East linked with us as a school and what their expectations was. So everyone had a really good knowledge of what attendance looked like. We also significantly trained the pastoral staff. 
Um, so I talked previously about a lack of con um, cohesion between admin staff in charge of attendance and pastoral staff. So that was something we worked really hard on. Um, the admin member of staff was trained to become an expert in attendance. So then it was about her working with the pastoral team and ensuring that they had that, that level of understanding as well. And now the team are really strong. They work really well together. Um, they understand, you know, that we have an expert, you know, in, in school on attendance, but they are also part of that process rather than having things done to them. They're part of it. It's now timely actions. So every week I talked about the meeting um, that I have on a Wednesday. From that meeting, the attendance officer sends out actions for our pastoral team and they have the Thursday and Friday to action those attendance um, points. So it might be a meeting, it might be a home visit, it might be a conversation with a child or a parent. So we direct those um, actions and they're undertaken by the pastoral team and it's done within that week. We talked a lot about shifting our language. So previously it used to be conversations around unauthorized absence or, you know, we, you know, you're going to be in trouble with the local authority and things like that. Where now we talk about lost learning, worry about missing out, you know, not being a part of our community because they're at home. So that there was a shift in that language, which was um we found had a, a better impact with parents. And again, that that layer of kindness so listening empathizing and supporting when parents would ring and say you know we're struggling to get my daughter in or I'm worried about this home visits are undertaken by our pastoral assistants so they're non-teaching members of staff to begin with pastoral uh, sorry home visits happened as and when when now we have a plan it they're done on a Tuesday and a Thursday morning and two members of staff go out and again there was training about what those home visits would look like what they would say how they would undertake them we also talked to parents and students about uh, making appointments so you know dental appointments medical appointments when to make them in the day that reduced impact of attendance so previously we had a culture where um, you know a child might have an 11 a.m medical appointment so they wouldn't come into school uh, and they might come in in the afternoon or they might have the whole day off whereas now we see students come into school they might be here for an hour they're collected by parents they have their medical appointment and they return back to school and that was something we worked hard to, to you know, to train our parents to do. The last thing um, was helping students to develop a resilience when not 100%. So when they're feeling, you know, a bit of colour, a bit of a cold, it was about talking to the students about, you know, powering through, um, you know, let's do this day, you can go home, have an early have an early bed, you know, have a bath and having those conversations with them about sort of self-care at the end of the day to ensure they were well enough to come to school the next day um, and trying to encourage them to stay in school, not when they're really, really poorly, but when they're just not 100%. We also trained our admin staff. So this is Emma, our receptionist, who obviously gets a lot of students come and talk to her um, during free time to tell them they're not very well. So training our admin staff about a common approach of how we would uh, manage this was really important. We also train them around making parental phone calls. So when a student uh, may report to us and tell us they're not very well, you know, we'll have a conversation with home. We will make contact and reach out with home. Um, but it's not about they're poorly, please come and collect them. Um, although we do do that if they're really obviously poorly. But we might say, you know, Sarah isn't 100% OK, um, but we think with medication she'll be OK to stay in school. And obviously that's a judgment call for us. Um, we do hand out paracetamol and ibuprofen um, and that is something that, that that we issue, but we monitor and parents give permission for. We do also have things like wheat bags um, and hot water bottles, things like per um, period pains and such, um, which we issue. And again, um, quite often, you know, students won't be poorly enough to go home, but they might just feel, be feeling a little bit off colour. So we have those conversations with parents and sometimes, you know, that parents will say, no, absolutely keep them in school. I know they're well enough to stay in. Um, Obviously, if they're clearly not well enough, we do ask parents to come and collect. 
Sending students home used to be agreed um, by various members of staff within schools. So it would be admin staff, it would be pastoral leads, it would be pastoral assistants, it would be SLT. And now we sit that responsibility just with SLT. So when we're sending a student home in the middle of the day, it's agreed by a member of SLT. And this is because we had a small group of students that would, you know, one day go to one member of staff, the next day go to a different member of staff, and they might be sent home a number of times, but but no one knew that they'd been sent home by someone else. So now SLT will look at reg certificates, might check with pastoral leads if there's anything else going on. Um, obviously, if they're clearly not well, they're just sent home. But sometimes when you've got a student telling you they're not well and they look perfectly fine and you've seen them in the yard having a great time with their friends at lunchtime, but then it's, you know, period for French and, and they're saying they're not very well. It's about having those conversations. And, and that's really, really important because sometimes we can unearth, you know, it might be that they've fallen behind in something. It might be they've not done a homework and it's making them anxious. It might be that they've fallen out with someone um, who they're sat with in that lesson. And we can unpick that and solve that and ensure that they're in school and that they're happy in school and ready to learn. Our admin team have become really good at spotting trends. So as I mentioned, you know, it might be a subject that they're keen on or a day um, that they find trickier to come to school on. Um, and again, that's something that we've worked hard on training. We've also encouraged the, the TLC, the giving the support, those students that perhaps don't get that support, love um, and um, care at home. We make sure, you know, they have that from staff in school. And that also fosters the feeling of belonging, feeling a part of Sandbach High School and knowing, you know, that that when they're here in school, that they are loved, they are cared for, and they are thought highly of. And that's something, again, we've worked hard to develop, not just with our teaching staff, um, but with our admin staff as well. So I've talked about the shift in culture to kindness. So when I took over um, a year and a little bit ago, um, all our letters were reworded. So I said they were quite brutal, but we looked at the wording of them um, and ensured that whilst we were talking about those high expectations about coming to school, it was done in a kind way. I also took the names off. So it used to have names of members of staff. And now the, the letters are just sent from Sandbach High School rather than a, an individual. We talked about training staff on how they communicated with others. Um, one of our mottos within school is connect before you correct. So when we may correct um, a student's uniform or behavior, it's really important that, that we connect with them first. You know, we say hello, we say good morning, we have a conversation about something positive. Um, and that's already embedded in um, our culture around behavior. Um, so it was now transferring that that culture of behavior onto the attendance as well. Supporting the parents has been a really, really big step that's helped shift this positive attendance. Um, so we talk about how we can help them. What can we do for you? Um, and it's that shift from you're in the wrong, get them into school to let's do this together. Let's do it. We're a partnership. That's had a really positive outcome. I talked about SLT being the, the you know, team that allow a student to go home um, it was also about training our SLT to make sure they did that with kindness we did it consistently um, and you know we had those conversations about is anything worrying you are you okay um, you know do you think you, you need any support before we talk about phoning parents um, again for that consistency across the whole of our team. We're lucky enough to have um, some amazing trustees, a number of which are parents at our school as well. And the feedback from our parent trustees has been really positive. Um, a number of them have been part of our attendance processes um, prior um, to the last 14 months, as well as more recently. And it, when we've been presenting in trustee meetings, they talk about a real positive shift um, in the way attendance is dealt with. Um, so it's really good to get positive feedback from them as parents, as well as trustees. So the next step we're looking at is sixth form attendance. And that's something we're already making some positive steps in. So again, looking at the culture of belonging, um, 
we feel that when girls don't have a sense of belonging, they don't attend. So it's been something we've worked really hard on and not just in an attendance sense, but, you know, pastorally with rewards, literally, you know, the whole culture of our school. So it's creating that emotional sense of belonging. You know, we don't want students to miss out. And I think girls particularly don't like missing out. But the trouble is when they do, um, that can delay their return to school because they perceive it might be difficult to fit back into their friendship group if they've been out at the weekend and, um, you know, done stuff of an evening and they've been poorly and missed out. So, you know, there's been a lot of work going on around um, helping students have the skills to have good friendships, know what good friendships are, be supportive of each other, as well as creating um, a, a sense of belonging through our house system, which we have in place, house competitions, um, you know, leadership structures, lots of different roles and responsibilities that children fit in with in school. Um, you can see the picture on the right. This is our, our poultry club, um, which a huge number of girls um, belong to. And again, you know, if, if one of these students is off and poorly, they're desperate to come back to care for the animals, to feed them, to look after them. Um, and it's that sense of belonging to something and feeling like, you know, that they're missing out if they're not here. And that could be sport, that could be music, it could be drama, it could be charity, it literally could be anything. We also train staff on how they communicate with students to develop a culture of belonging. So we literally gave scripts to form tutors to use, you know, to utilize language that created that. So form tutors use the word, you know, we've missed you when students have been off ill. They talk about, you know, we had a inter-house netball competition. We wish you had, you had you for the house competition. We would have done better with you. You're a really good sportswoman. It's just creating those aspects of where a child thinks, no, I need to be here. I don't want to let people down. They also talk about, um, you know, any concerns. So, you know, is everything OK? Are you OK with friends? Have you got any worries about returning? And again, that might be um, because they've missed out on a piece of homework or they're worried to come back to a test that perhaps they haven't been able to revise for for their poorly, as they've been poorly. But identifying what that is, you know, reaching out to that teacher to let them know, it, ju it just creates that sense of a student knowing that, that their form tutor or the subject teacher or the pastoral lead um, has got them and they're there. Lastly, supporting the parents in understanding the impact of their child being off school socially. So, you know, if they're not in when they're not 100% um, and they could be in, you know, they're missing out with friends. And the longer they're off, the harder it is to return. Lastly, we embed um, attendance in absolutely everything we do. So I've talked about creating that culture where everyone has responsibility for attendance. And that doesn't matter, you know, whether you're the receptionist, whether you're a form tutor, a subject teacher or a member of SLT. It literally is embedded in all we do. So when we do parent engagement groups, um, it could be about um, improving your maths at key stage four. The, you know, the maths teacher will talk about um, students needing to be in gaps in knowledge. You know, what happens if they're off, how to catch up with work. It could be an open evening for prospective parents and talking about what we expect in relation to attendance. Um, I, I think we, you know, we've come across, and I'm sure you all have, that that parents think 80% attendance is great because 80% is a high um, attendance level. But it's it's talking to them about actually how many lessons they've missed at 80%, how many days they've missed, showing them a reg certificate and what that looks like. Um, whether it's publicity, welcome booklets for students, parents evening, achievement team work, everyone talks about attendance and holds it in high regard. And having that culture has helped improve our attendance. There has been um, some difficulties in doing, um, doing this work. Um, initially, we had a pain barrier um, from our parents, um, but we've worked through that. You know, when um, when I took over, holidays sometimes were authorised um, or often was authorised. And now, you know, we don't authorise holidays unless it's really special circumstances. Um, 
so now you know it used to be difficult we used to get complaints but where now parents will say I'm just letting you know I'm doing this I've not taken this decision lightly I know you're not going to authorize it but I just want to let you know so we've worked through that pain barrier um, and this term it's been so much easier um, something we do find difficult is being compared to local schools. So, for example, if I don't authorize a holiday, um, they'll say, well, it, you know, that's unfair because, you know, this school has the primary school has. Um, so that that is hard. Um, but again, I think our parents now understand what our expectations are around attendance and it has got easier. Um, and I've talked about, you know, that um, they, they felt staff, uh, parents, sorry, felt it was unkind for not authorising holidays. And it's shifting that understanding that actually we are being kind because we're, we're protecting your daughter, um, your daughter's education. And that's it from us. Brilliant. That was absolutely fantastic. Thank you for so much detail. Um, we do have some questions that I want to actually include in the recording. So before we stop recording, I want to go ahead and pose some of these questions to you. First of all, are you happy to share the slides? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And then I think folks are quite interested in um, your letter templates, if you are willing to share those so they can see how you've worded things. I don't know whether there are training materials that you might also be willing to share, but anything you're willing to share, I think would be very welcome. Um, we can and then that. someone's is that okay yeah? yeah of course brilliant and then um just to set sort of a, to understand your school someone's asked how many students are in the school from 7 yeah. to 11 and how many pastoral staff and how many admin staff yeah so we're just north of 1400 students in our school we sort of hover between 1400 and to to about 1400 um just slightly higher we have a lot of movement at the moment because we have a lot of refugee and asylum seeker children so they do move but we're about 1400 um our pastoral structure is we've got we are this is our second year of our house structure so we have four houses um each of which has a pastoral lead who is a teacher um and they are supported by a full-time member of um support staff a pastoral colleague and then in addition to that um in terms of admin staff who link with um attendance we've got our um attendance lead um Jackie Woods who is fantastic and she's the colleague that we spoke about training up um to do this and she is supported by her team that she leads who do lots of things linked to school um take the messages off the system make phone calls to parents that sort of thing so they contribute to jackie's work in terms of attendance brilliant that's really helpful now you must have a lot of parents who don't speak english how do you communicate with them we do and it is tricky we we are as all schools are in terms of equality trying to have a staff that's more and more diverse and more and more representative of our student body our change in our makeup's been quite rapid it's literally happened in the yeah. last three years we went from no eal to um to lots so we've got some staff who do um we do all the things that probably lots of people do uh, we do our best to get translations we do our best to use the children we do our best to go meet with the parents um i think we're just persistent we just we we, we just persist Brilliant. Um, so we've got a few others I want to throw in here before we stop recording. Uh, let's see. The Let's go back up. Uh, have you had to do much messaging to parents around illness, such as reinforcing new expectations around COVID? Yeah, so we still have our first aid calls um, that, that the admin team put in. I think in relation to COVID, do you mean, the, I'm assuming you mean the current situation with COVID? Um, yeah, absolutely. And I think, again, it's all about training, um, you know, training our parents, training our staff. This is this is, you know, the expectations, um, you know, if, they, if they're well enough, you send them in. And, we, you know, we absolutely sometimes get kicked back and parents say, you know, no, it's COVID. I'm not sending them in. Um, mm. But the, the more you persist, the more you train, the more you share, um, you know, the better outcomes we're having in relation to attendance. Brilliant. Um says, do you have daily phone calls home completed by non-teaching pastoral team? I think you covered that. Go on. Yeah. So we all, so the admin team do the first day call. So if we haven't had it reported on the app, 
um, then they will do the first day call. Um, and then they will raise any concerns with the pastoral team. So our pastoral assistants who are non-teachers, there's four of them, one for each house. You know, if there's a concern, if we're worried, if the if the child's been off for a number of days and it, it seems something, you know, headache and they've been off sort of three, four days, then that pastoral assistant will reach out in a phone call. It, it may be a, a home visit if it's a student that, um, you know, is known to us and we know has difficulties. But it's all about, you know, keeping those lines of communications open. And I think that's what we were lacking previously. You know, those open lines of a communication that, that are underpinned with, with kindness and support. Absolutely. So another question is around home visits. The home visits you mentioned, what is the threshold for those visits? It's really bespoke. So when I talked about the um, the Wednesday meeting um, that I have with the admin um, lead on attendance, so we will look and it might be, you know, this child actually does well with a home visit. We know that a home visit has real high impact. They've been off for two days um, a mum might say it's anxiety or mental health. Um, you know, we know that an early visit actually will get that student back in. It might be we go out to the house, um, you know, obviously phone call first. Um, we go out to the house and we can manage to bring that child back into school. Um, you know, we don't do that on a daily basis, but we know that we're, you know, setting that child up for a, a positive um, day that day that we can hopefully continue. Um, it might be that we have reason to believe a student's on holiday. So a parent's reported illness, but actually their classmates are saying they're on holiday in Ibiza. Um, so we might do a home visit to see if anyone's at home, um, you know, see if see if the car's on the drive, see if the curtains are shut and so on. Um, or it might be um, that they've had over a week off and we need to go and, and reach out. It really is bespoke. We don't set, um, you know, a specific thing. We're doing a home visit after this many days off because, you know, we know our students well. And I think that's a difference to the support Cheshire East can, can give compared to us as a school. We know our students inside out. We know our families really well um, and we know where we can have impact. There's sort of a follow up question. How often do you visit long term absentees? Really good question. Um, so if they're on medical needs tuition and someone else externally is seeing them, it's once every two weeks. If there's no eyes on from anyone, so they haven't got a social worker, you know, they're not not under med needs. Um, so literally no one um, from a profession is seeing them. It's weekly. And then for me, you, I can see that legal prosecution is still in your arsenal of tools. Absolutely, yeah. What is the threshold for that? And how often do you find yourself actually having to resort to that? Because we know, we, we hear that that's actually not working with parents now. Okay. Um, so we've had some, we've had some positive wins from it. Um, and we actually know, you know, there's some families we know if, um, they have a pre-PN, for example, that their child will attend every single day. Um, so we, we know that that's a positive step. Um, there are other families we know that we, you know, we've put that in place and it, and it hasn't had any impact whatsoever. Um, so I think we, we use it where we think it can have impact. We do. We'll go through periods where we don't have, you know, we don't apply for any. And then I think um, last month we sent five off. Um, but we, you know, we've, we've done much more than that in, in previous times. So it really is dependent. But what I will say is, is, is literally month by month, it, it just gets better. Um, so what, last year, last academic year, my Wednesday meetings, you know, could easily be two hours where currently they're sort of 30, 40 minutes, um, because attendance is so much better. Brilliant. Um, so there are some more questions, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the recording so we can keep it within a certain length. Ellen and Nikki, I want to thank you on, on record. I want to thank you for sharing all of this fantastic information with us. I think it's going to be incredibly useful to people as they think about how they look at their systems and structures and processes and really owning attendance. That seems to be the key message and kindness. So thank you. We'll stop recording now, but we'll carry on with questions afterwards.